right, welcome back to another video. So today's video, I'm kind of combining two subjects that you may be following. So today I'm in my Ram ProMaster uh, self-converted you know, camper van, and I'm working on my Android stereo. So if you watched the original video, you saw I installed this Joying 10.1 inch HD stereo and I installed a dash camera. Well, it's been a little while. I've been trying multiple dash cameras in my other vehicles, and I finally settled on what I think uh, isn't necessarily the best dash camera, but it's the best uh, dash camera to use with an Android stereo for the best price without spending too much money. So this video is in no way sponsored by th this company. I actually, this is the second one of these now I've bought with my own money. But we're talking sub $50 for a 1080p, and it is truly 1080p dash camera. And what makes this different than all the other Android dash cameras that I've used in the past is they're meant to, they do have an app that they run right on the head unit. They're connected via USB cable. And obviously they're all some sort of iteration, you know, like this. They only support usually like 32 gigabyte cards. The big problem is there's no way to get the video from the camera. So if you need the video, you have to physically remove the SD card from the camera, put it in an SD card adapter, put it in your computer or your phone, transfer it manually like that. So the big difference with this is this is not designed specifically to run on an Android stereo. It, you can use an iPhone or an Android phone to connect directly to the camera. But on that same note, since we're running Android OS on here, we can install the app, we can watch it live, we can transfer video directly to the head unit, which if you have an internet connection on the head unit, you can then send it, or you can transfer it directly to your phone. It just gives us way more options, it has a better picture, and Overall, it's just a much better experience if you need to get the video off the camera. All right, so when you open the box, not a whole lot going on here. Basically have this power adapter. So I'll talk more about that in just a second. Got some cable routing, stick on type things, extra double-sided tape for the camera itself. Got a little manual here. Then of course the camera itself. All right, so you see this camera, it does not have a video screen, but it does have a screen that displays like the date and time and the status of the camera, which is nice. Um, it feels light and cheap. Uh, it has a, kind of an old fashioned USB port. It doesn't really matter, that's really just for power. And here's your micro SD card slot. Um, it does support up to a 128 gigabyte card. Obviously, we'll get this installed on the windshield. And then there's a button right here. This is a multifunction button. Uh, it's power on and off. And it's also, uh, if you want to lock a recording, like if something happens on the road, you just reach up and tap that button, and it kind of marks that video for you. Uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. Some of the positives and negatives. All right, so basically it's real simple. You just want to decide kind of like how we want to mount this on the window, where we want to mount it. Um, it'll be a little different than the other one I installed just because of the orientation of the lens. This one's probably gonna have to go a little bit higher up on the window here. Uh, but it is kind of meant to be oriented so the button is facing you, the driver, and the power comes out the right-hand side. So, like I talked about, you have, it does come with a cigarette lighter plug, power port for the camera. It's just basically a five volt USB output on the one end. Um, I already have power running up here from the stereo. Now, the plug does not fit. Uh, so that's an issue, but basically on that wire hanging over here, it's four wires, 
two of them are power. So you have five volts positive and negative, and then you have your two USB wires, which we'll not be using because we'll not be transferring any data via the cable from that to the head unit. But we can use the power from that. The nice thing is the head unit stays on, powers that camera feed for a while on a timer after you turn off the vehicle. So if you're parked somewhere, you know, going in and out of a store, your camera will stay recording. It will allow this to record. This camera is really simple. You apply power to it, it turns on, starts recording. You cut power, it, it has just probably like a capacitor in it that stores a little bit of energy long enough to basically save the file where it's at and then shut down immediately. You, when you get this plug, basically, if you just run that, um, if you have a switched outlet, it'll turn on and off. Um, if it's constant, the camera will record all the time, which obviously you don't want, it's a power drain. So they do make a cable that uh, plugs into the o OBD2 port. Um, there's a couple different ways to do it. You could just solder uh, power and ground wire onto the front of this, tape it up, and then hook it to a 12 volt source. You know, even the wire that powers the stereo. And then that's the, kind of just your 12 to five volt converter. You know, there's a bunch of different ways to implement this. Um, I'm just gonna use the wiring that I already have. So I'll just cut and splice the connector off of here onto that wire and we'll be able to plug it into the camera. All right, so obviously here's our camera. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna put my SD card in first. I have my power cable ran here. I just converted it. So like I said, when the car is on or the stereo is on, it'll provide power. And I'm going to wait to install this on the windshield so I can kind of see um, where the position is, see if I like it. Now, what you want to go ahead and do now is download the app. I'm going to show you how to download the app in the app store on the head unit, but you could do the same thing on your cell phone. Okay, so you'll want to make sure you're connected to the internet. Go to the Play Store. We're looking for the it's P E Z T I O app. That's what it looks like right there. Click the install button. Let's go ahead and open it. Okay, after we've got the app downloaded, we're ready to apply power. I'm going to go ahead, I'll go ahead and turn on the head unit. Alright, and apply power. See, it comes on, it says welcome. It's just spoke out loud, please format the SD card. So now we'll go into our, kind of just set the camera here for a second. And now we're ready to go into the app. Okay, so there it is there. All right, so we want to add a camera. So what we need to do is we need to go on to the, the correct Wi-Fi network on the head unit or your phone, and it's this pet ZO right there. It said the default password. Of course, I didn't look quick enough. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We will click connect. Okay, so it will connect. Uh, there will be no internet, obviously. You're just connected directly to the camera. So keep that in mind. You will lose your internet connection while you're connected directly to the camera. All right, I'll click add camera. There it is, it found it. It's telling us to format the card, so we're going to go into the camera. There you can see we're now directly connected. Okay. 
Okay, so unfortunately, due to the way the screen is, it's not letting me see the settings option to format the SD card. So what I'm going to have to do is set it up on my phone. So the same thing. We're going to connect to that network. Okay, so we're connected. Had it disconnected on the other one. You can only have one device connected, which is actually a good security thing. Override, it says it's connected without an internet. Okay. So we're gonna go into the camera. Now you can see, so this is what we're missing here, this camera settings. So we're going to format the card. And right, now you can say if you want to change the Wi-Fi password, how long the screen stays on. Um, you know, you can have it so that little tiny screen that shows the time dims out if you want. Um, date and time on the video. Uh, I'm going to change the flicker to 60 hertz since we're in the United States. You can change the exposure compensation, the loop length, so what basically how long each video file is. Uh, I guess we'll just leave it on a minute. You can change, if you don't want to hear the voice prompts, you can turn them off. You can turn them all the way up. It's kind of up to you. You can turn on whether you want it to record sound or not. Okay, so as long as we're in these settings like this, it will not record if I back out. You can hear that the camera automatically started recording. You can see on the screen, there's a little red light. It automatically updated the date and time from your phone. Uh, it does keep the date and time pretty good. There is some sort of like a little battery inside that charges to keep the date and time because if I, you turn it off after only having it on for a few seconds, the first time, it'll lose the date and time, possibly. So you, it, once you go for a drive the first time, you'll never lose the date and time again, has been my experience. Uh, so you can see I've got some videos from my other vehicle. Or downloaded. Give you kind of an idea. I'll play these on uh, directly on the screen so you can see how the video quality of the camera looks. But again, if we go into the camera. it's recording um, after it started writing files if you click this camera file button here it goes in and these are the videos that it's recorded so far you can watch them um, I don't believe there's sound but to download them to your phone what you will actually do you can do a still capture you can delete the video or you can download it so if I click download it will actually take this uh, file here and it is a dot mov movie file and it's transferring it directly to my phone so it's very convenient once you download the video you're looking for um, it will save it to your phone and you can then share it you know YouTube put it in an email I mean, it is kind of a large file 35 megabytes but uh, whatever you need to do with it um, you can go ahead and share it directly now, again, let me get out of here, so it'll record. Now, while it's recording, if I press the button on the side, like I said, video lock. it says video lock. And um, if I go back into the files here, Stop and if I look, there should be in the locked area, you'll see 
there's this little file. Now, the, the one thing that I've noticed, so you can hear it. So one thing that I've noticed is that the um, camera, so watch this. See, so it did get a little bit before I pressed the button. But one thing I've noticed uh, using it in my other vehicle is that what I, if you're a little late on pressing the button, um, it doesn't really necessarily capture what you're trying to save. So I've found it's best, as long as you have a big enough SD card, it's not like you have to worry about it overriding the incident. Just remember, you know, the time. Um, you can mark it by using that button, but just understand that what you are actually trying to capture on the video may not be in the lock file, but it will be around it. So if you go back in here, just to the loop files, they'll be all here. You'll, you'll find, be able to find your incident based on the locked file. So it says, you know, 1037, well, if I go over here, you know, it's in one of these files also, is my, is my point. Um... And then I've also noticed uh, one kind of a, and it could just be my other camera, um, when it gets hot, you know, this sits in the windshield all day, uh, the button is kind of unresponsive sometimes. So when you press it, uh, it may not block the video, or and it won't, you won't hear that sound. You'll have to hit it multiple times for it to work. Uh, I would say that it's probably just due to how hot this thing gets. It's never failed to record the videos, it just doesn't always mark it correctly. So, one thing to keep in mind. But overall, like I said, for the price, this is the best uh, combination of price, features, it doesn't have GPS or anything like that. Uh, it's just recording a good high quality video uh, the video is good enough to make out most license plates, especially if you're stopped behind someone at a light. Um, and that's obviously pretty important. So, something to keep in mind. Um, just wanted to give a little quick review. So, I'll go ahead and now that we've got that formatted. Right. So, again, my plan is not to drive around with the screen on because obviously I'm looking straight out the window. And so, it's not a big deal. Um, but fact is it's there if you'd like to watch what's going on in front of you okay. now one other thing I've noticed obviously since this is locked in kind of a landscape mode the uh, you can control certain functions like you can do a screenshot you can mute the audio um, you cannot obviously rotate the screen that's, that's to pause the video to stop it from recording it takes a picture of whatever's on the screen so you can do all this while you're driving down the road now what it does not do she doesn't even want to let me get back there now is since I can't go into the camera see this application it's just it's for it's not formatted for a tablet like this I can change these settings but I cannot get um, into to where to download videos onto the head unit so it kind of is a little disappointing i think with an app update you'd have full functionality on here um, obviously you could transfer it to your phone very easily um, obviously there's still way more functionality with this camera than any other of the android radio cameras because so i can do everything that i could do another one as far as being able to watch it live and, you know, mark stuff and all that. Um, and then I can use my phone to get the files via Wi-Fi very quickly with that app. Um, and if the developer 
releases an update uh, for this app that would allow it to run in tablet mode. See where I could get to, I need to get down here a little bit further off the screen or I can click the files area and then you could transfer the files. But unfortunately, like I said, there's just no, yeah, I mean, it won't even let me back out of here. So something to keep in mind. It's not perfect, but again, you know, I think you'll agree if you've used any of the Android head unit specific dash cameras that it is a better experience. All right, so after you get it, you know, where you want it, get it attached, tuck my wires so you don't see them. So this is basically how it looks up in the windshield. Let's see, it's running live on here. Recording. All right, so again, like I said, I've tried this out in another vehicle for quite a while that doesn't have an Android stereo and it works really good. Um, I thought it would just throw it out there as a suggestion, as a kind of a follow-up to my last video on where I compared different uh, dash cameras available for the Android series. If you have any questions, you can leave them in the comment section below. I'll, I'll go ahead and put a link in the description where you can buy this camera in case you want to get the same one. Um, pretty much any Wi-Fi capable camera that has an app for Android should be able to do pretty much the same thing, but this is one I tested. Again, app needs a little bit more work to get full functionality on the head unit itself, but it's a good option. All right. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you later.